Hey girl, just wanted to thank you for letting Roger go. He and I just got married at the courthouse this morning. I know the two of us will definitely be happy together. So you finally did it, huh? Congrats to getting married to my ex, I guess. Hope it works out between you and that cheater. He's damaged goods as far as I'm concerned. Come on, Stella. At least try to be happy for me. I know he's your ex, but we have a way better relationship than you ever did. And anyway, you never gave him a chance. You just threw him out when the going got rough. Yeah, sure, whatever you say. Don't be such a sore loser. I'm not being a sore loser. It's just that I don't really appreciate it when one of my friends has an affair with my husband and then proceeds to steal him away from me. I think I'm having a pretty normal reaction to it, to be honest. If you ask me, I doubt this is going to work out for you. These kinds of marriages never really do. Karma will win out in the end. It'll just have to prove you wrong then. Well be happier than you can even imagine. Roger and I have already had a blast together. I'm happier than I ever thought I'd be. I'm not worried about us at all. His parents even gave us their blessing, which is more than I can say for you. And unlike you, I'm a lot cuter and more charming. He seems to like that about me. And it definitely helped with the parents too. Wait, so you've met his mother? Oh yeah, we got along like sisters. She's great. She seems like someone you'd really like. But I guess she's nothing but a stranger to you now. Roger's mom is obsessed with me. We've gone out shopping like five times in the past month alone. That's a surprise. His mom seemed to like me quite a bit when we were married. She was pretty mad when she heard that you and Roger were having an affair together. She even tried to convince him not to leave me. I was all just for show, I'm sure. She clearly doesn't care about you at all now. Now that I'm around, it's like you never even existed. She's totally forgotten about the affair and everything. All she really wants now is a grand kid. And since you never bothered to have kids when you two were together, she seemed pretty happy to have me and the family instead. Since I'm actually going to give her some? I'm guessing that you're already pregnant then? Explains why you were in such a rush to tie the knot. It's nothing like that. I only found out a few days ago. Which means you probably knew it was a possibility before you even eloped. Whatever, it's fine. What matters is we're married now. The baby will be a wedding present to all of us. You might as well get us both a wedding present and a gift for the shower just to save yourself some time. You are coming to the shower, right? I think I'll skip it. There's something sort of gosh about a combined baby and bridal shower. Why would you even want me there? I'm pretty sure all of you hate me anyway. That's a good point. I think we're all better off without you. Now that Roger and I are married and have a baby on the way, I don't think I want you here to throw a wrench in my happiness. After all, I have more important things to focus on. I have a wedding and a shower to plan. Should be good practice for when I have to impress Roger's co-workers. Roger told me he's planning on entertaining a lot more, and now that he has this big new job. It's quite a lot of responsibility. I'm sure all his work friends will think highly of the woman who stole her husband from her friend just so she can host stuffy parties. Seems like a really stellar reputation to have. They don't need to know anything about that. As far as they're concerned, I'm just his second wife after his first wife left him out of the blue. The details of how we got together aren't important. And it's not like I'm the only woman in the world whose husband was married before. Even if they do find out it'll just be my normal, gracious self and ensure everyone will think nothing of it. Maybe I should be the bigger woman and invite you to the wedding just to show how understanding I am. I'll even put you front and center so everyone knows just how I feel about our situation. You'll be my perfect little centerpiece. How have you been, Stella? I know it's been a while since we spoke. It has. 
I think the last time we spoke was just before the divorce, if I'm remembering correctly. I believe so. Sorry to bother you, but I do have something I need to ask, if that's okay. I'm glad to help however I can. I'm not sure if you heard, but Roger and Myrna recently eloped. Yes, she told me. Oh well, I know you and I don't really have all that much reason to be speaking now that you and Roger are divorced. But I hope there's no bad blood between us. No, of course not. You were always kind to me. But I'm not sure if it's a good idea for us to keep in contact either way. You should be focusing on your new daughter-in-law. After all, she is expecting. Well, if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm not that keen on Myrna. I don't really understand what Roger sees in her. She's so flippant and vain, and just doesn't seem like a good match for him at all. She's sweet to me, I suppose, but that can only get her so far. I'm sort of surprised you don't like her much. She made it seem like everyone was really fond of her. She said you'd given your blessing and were quite happy about it all. I'm not sure what impression she gave you, but no. We're not very happy with the arrangement at all. Getting married in such a hurry to your mistress so soon after your divorce. In proper society, it's just unheard of. In my day, a gentleman would wait patiently until a proper amount of time had passed before remarrying. I thought I raised Roger to be better than this. I'm embarrassed to be seen with them, frankly. They've made themselves the talk of the town with their little stunt, and not in a good way. I can only imagine. So why exactly does she think you approve of them, I wonder? I'm not exactly sure. We never said anything to that effect. All we did was give them a little bit of money to help them get settled as soon as possible. I figure if they can find a house and store it a family, this will all blow over soon. But I wouldn't say we ever gave her blessing. Not really, anyway. I suppose that makes sense. Though, and I don't mean this to be rude. Why did you buy him a house? He should be able to afford a down payment on a nice place at least with the kind of money he makes. Well, I'm sorry to report that between the alimony payments and some recent expenses, he's not quite as well off as you might expect. He barely has any savings, let alone enough to afford a house. So he begged us to give him enough for a down payment on a modest townhouse. As you might imagine, though, Myrna was not especially satisfied with such a small house. That's actually the reason I wanted to speak with you today. Roger has asked me to ask if you would be willing to return some of the money from his alimony payments so they can afford a better house. I'm sorry, what? Is he serious? Does he really want me to give back the court-ordered payments? I know, it's absurd. I told him you'd never agree. But he begged me to ask at the very least. He knows you and I were close when you two were married. And he didn't think you'd ever agree if he asked, but that I might be able to convince you. He called it a wedding present. That does explain why Myrna wanted to invite me to their wedding and shower. I guess she figured if I said no, she could at least try to return my presents for cash. Unfortunately, none of this behavior seems too out of character for her. I'm truly sorry that Roger has caused you all this grief. I do still consider you to be a part of our family, in spite of everything. You have always been such a help to us. Roger should be more grateful to you for everything you've done. After all, it was you who helped our company get out of trouble. I can't take all the credit. You were the one who helped me learn the business. I just made sure it was all going along well and that the finances were all in order. I do really miss working with you guys. Me and Gwyn miss you too. It hasn't been the same without you here. Is business still going smoothly? Oh, fantastically, thanks to all the software you showed us. No one missed paychecks or unpaid invoices. But we'd take you back in a heartbeat if it weren't so awkward. Are you sure you can't find a way to make up with Roger? I'd love to see the two of you back together again. You really did bring out the best in him. You really are too kind. 
but I'm afraid there's no going back. Or at least I don't see any way of s managing anything from our relationship. I'm not even sure I'd want to if I could. But that being said, I'd still like to be friends with you and Gwyn. Oh, I would love that. I'm pretty busy right now with my new job. And it might be a little weird for us to start spending time together so soon after Roger remarried. But once things settle down a bit, I'd love to get together with you guys for dinner or something. That would be wonderful. You are right, though. It would be prudent to wait until the dust has settled. I'll be sure to message you when things are a bit more calm around here. I know exactly where we should go. I'm looking forward to it. I can't even believe it. I didn't think you'd actually come to the wedding. You invited me to the wedding yourself. It would have been rude for me to refuse. And I know you spent a lot of money on those flashy invitations. It seemed like a waste not to go. Well, the future CEO of a major multinational corporation should have fitting invitations. I absolutely must not spare any expense if I'm going to keep up with the ladies that run in this crowd. That tracks. You definitely achieved your goal. I can't imagine how much it costs to fill the church with that many flowers, especially such exotic ones. Getting that many orchids is going to cost a pretty penny. You know it. By the way, I'm curious. I'm pretty sure Roger mentioned it at one point, but I wanted to see if he remembered correctly. How much did you guys spend when you got married? Forty thousand or so, right? Something like that. I think it was a little less. Good to know. I just wanted to make sure we outspent you by a mile. Seems like it. I wouldn't have to worry about that. Mine was basically a Vegas wedding compared to yours. What I'm wondering about, though, is where you got all that money. It had to be at least double mine, if not more. Something like that. I'm surprised to hear he has 80 zero 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 or more just laying around. You're asking the wrong person. I don't handle the money. The invitations were pretty pricey. I know that much. But it's not like we had many choices on spending what we did with our guest list. Unlike you, I have standards to uphold as the wife of an executive. It didn't matter when you got married since he wasn't anything other than the pencil pusher back then. But as the wife of a future CEO, I need to put on a show. Sure, I suppose that makes sense. But even then, I feel like your wedding might have been a bit overkill. I'm not sure your gaudy display was all that impressive to the kinds of people Roger works with. Really though, the thing that I'm surprised at is that you could afford it at all. Roger may have a big-time job, but there's no way he could just shell out the cash for all that. I'm sure he figured it out. After all, I'm the love of his life. He should find a way to pay for the wedding I want. No. The wedding I need. And having me as his wife will pay off in the end. Hell be in the top spot in no time with my professional entertaining skills. Whatever you say. You're just jealous that I have this perfect life and you don't. I know how much you wish you could be back with Roger and his family. But you're nobody to them now. They just love having me as their new daughter in law. I'm sure if there were any problems, they'd help us out. I'm not sure they like you as much as you think. What do you know? They never cared about you. But they love me more than enough to make sure I'm well taken care of. And anyway, even if they don't, a little birdie told me that we should be expecting a nice big present from someone really soon. Do you mean me? Of course I do. Didn't Olwyn tell you? I thought considering we invited you to this lavish wedding and everything, that you might be more inclined to return the favor. 
at the very least, is a way to show how happy you are for us. What makes you think I'd do that? I'm not going to just hand you a down payment on a house. In fact, I didn't even bring a gift to your wedding. Why did you even bother to come then? If you're not going to properly celebrate our wedding, why show up at all? Are you really that bored that you just show up to your ex's wedding for the fun of it? That's so sad. Oh, I see what's going on here. You must still be in love with him. Did you come to the wedding to try to stop it? I'm sure the priest didn't say that part about objections. I knew you'd ruin it if you had the chance. You really are just pitiful. I definitely do not have any lingering affection for Roger. If anything, it's quite the opposite. I really do feel bad for you. So desperate to see him again that you'd go to his wedding to a different woman just for one last peek before he's out of your reach forever? I'm so glad I picked that perfect seat out for you. It really highlighted how pitiful this all was. You want to know the real reason I went? Olwen asked me to go. Ha. Huh? She insisted I come to the wedding. Actually, she told me she went out of her way to find me a special seat. Didn't you notice I was sat next to her? Of course I noticed. That's certainly not where I planned on you to sit. Right, that's where she planned I sit. According to her, I wasn't on the seating chart at all for some reason. I thought you wouldn't come. I just assumed you wouldn't be there and rearranged all the seating for the reception. No wonder everyone was so confused. It took an extra 20 minutes to get everyone seated because there wasn't enough space for Roger's colleagues up front. Did you really not know I was coming? You invited me yourself. And aren't you in charge of the seating arrangements anyway? I mean, yeah. But I thought it was all sorted out. I went way out of my way to make sure all the important people had the best seats. And you messed all of that up. Well, I didn't. Olwyn moved everyone around to make sure that her table was actually with people she wanted to sit with. Which normally is a little rude, but it's also pretty rude to seat your in-laws and parents apart. So she took it upon herself to fix the faux pas, and she had a seat for me as well. I can't believe she'd do that. For what it's worth, it was a fun party. I'm not sure it was worth all that money, but you really did put on a show like you wanted. How much did that ice sculpture cost? It had to be half the budget alone. Hey, what did you do? You were the one who caused the fight, weren't you? Did you really not know? I would have expected that Olwyn would have explained it to you by now. Part of the reason we got divorced was because Roger took a job with a rival company. I was against it, and he insisted it was for the best, despite it devastating his parents to see their only son in competition with them. They nearly went bankrupt, until Olwyn had the brilliant idea of trying to pull some of their business back by poaching their employees. Why didn't she tell me any of this? I can't say. She knew this would happen, didn't she? She wanted to see my wedding go up in flames. Now they're threatening to fire Roger. That's a shame. It doesn't really sound like my problem, though. What do you mean? You were the one who caused all this. I didn't do anything. Well, you could have prevented it. If you had warned me about all of this, maybe I could have done something about it. I would have at least made sure not to invite the people who got poached. You didn't say anything because you wanted to see this happen. I thought you knew. I figured Olwyn must have told you when she saw the guest list. I guess she was actually trying to do you a favor by rearranging the seating chart. You had some people who are now working for Olwyn sitting with their old bosses. 
thanks to her, you actually got to have a few hours of peace before it all blew up. You had to have done this. You must have been working with her to sabotage my wedding. Nope, I had nothing to do with it. This is all on you. There's no way. Didn't you use to work for her? I did, but I quit after me and Roger got divorced. It felt a little weird working at the company that belonged to my ex-in-laws. I found another job, but Olwen has asked me back a few times. Though I might end up working for her again soon. I hear that her company is planning to buy mine out. And once that happens, they'll be the biggest in the business. After that, I'm not sure Roger's new company can survive much longer. Well, have a huge market share, more than they can compete with. Why are you doing this to me? You're trying to ruin me and Roger. I don't have anything to do with this. I'm just along for the ride. I don't believe you for a second. You're coordinating all of this somehow. You're just jealous that I'm happy and you're not. I have everything you want happy marriage, a house, a loving family. Are you sure about that? I'm not sure about that loving family part. Sure, Roger must see something in you. But I know Olwen and Gwyn don't think very much of you. Why would you even say that? What makes you think they don't like me? Well, Olwen told me herself. What? I don't believe you. I can send you the receipts if you really want to see them. But I think she'd rather just tell you herself. She may get the chance too soon. I don't believe any of this. You're lying. You're just trying to sow even more discord. I knew it. There's no way you weren't involved with the disaster during the reception. I mean, I do admit, I might have said something to some of my old co-workers. But I definitely didn't start any fights. I can't believe this. This is all because I invited you. If I didn't talk to you, this would have all gone okay. I'm not so sure about that. This was probably inevitable. And even if it didn't happen at your wedding, it would have happened at some point. They would have figured out who you were. I'm sure half of Roger's colleagues only came to try and poach the others back. Wait. Is that why I got such bad gifts? Wouldn't surprise me if that were the case. Why bother spending money on some lavish gift for the man whose mother is ruining your business and his mistress? Seems like a bad business decision to me. Now there's no way we can afford that down payment. I was relying on the money from the returns to be able to put down the cash. Seems like that little scheme failed. I don't think I saw a single gift bigger than a bread box on the table. None of this was supposed to happen. I was supposed to be in Cabo on my honeymoon about to start my perfect married life. And now it's all ruined. You might want to start planning for your future. I'm pretty sure it's all going to change soon. It doesn't seem like Roger has a very good chance of becoming CEO after all. Ugh. How did this happen? Maybe you should have paid more attention to who was at your wedding instead of spending a bunch of money you didn't have. I don't know that it would have fixed much, but you might have had a better time at least. Either way, I had a good time, so thanks for that at least. Thank you again for coming to the wedding. I know it was quite the disaster but I was glad you were there for it. Of course, if anything, I had a lot of fun. It was sort of like watching one of those shows about plane crashes. A bit gruesome, but you can't help but enjoy it. As morbid as that comparison is, I think I can understand where you're coming from. Anyway, I was just glad to have an ally at the very least. I do appreciate you sticking by me the whole time. 
If anyone should be thanking anyone, it's me who should be thanking you. Just you being there kept me from going entirely out of my mind. And it definitely helped distract from some of the chaos between our employees and Roger's colleagues. I hope all of that ends up going well. It seems like there's still a lot of chaos. Oh, I'm sure ITL will work out just fine. I'm looking forward to working with you again. So am I. I do feel like I should apologize for saying something about it to Roger's boss. I didn't know who he was at the time. I'm sure you were hoping it would go by without any incident. To be perfectly honest, I'm glad it happened. I was debating announcing it at some point soon anyway, so you spared me all that awkwardness. But anyway, enough about that. We should be celebrating. It's not official yet, so don't tell anyone quite yet, but... The merger went through. And we've decided to promote you to CFO. Wow. Really? Of course, dear. We want to have our strongest financial expert in the driver's seat. You helped us so much before. We have faith that you'll be able to help us make it through the merger and grow even more. I'm so grateful. This is so exciting. It really is. Gwyn and I will have to take you out to dinner to celebrate your new job. I love to do that. Thank you so much, Olwyn. It's the least we can do. Help me, Stella. Help you? With what? We're going bankrupt. What happened? Did Roger get fired? No, of course not. But, well, his company is laying everyone off. And pretty much everyone else is going to Olwyn's company instead. There's no way his company can survive more than another month. It would take a miracle for the company not to collapse. Better start praying now, then. Though I'm not sure how much good that will do at this point. Take this seriously. I don't have time for your jokes. Can he hire more people? They've tried. No one wants to work for them. They've done everything they can think of. But even if they do hire someone, they just end up working for Olwyn in a few months. Roger's done everything he can, but nothing's worked. He can't do his job without employees. I have to say, this all sounds pretty familiar. Karma really is something. What are you talking about? Well, you stole from me, now the tables are turned. What? This has nothing to do with any of that. Me stealing your husband has nothing to do with Olwyn poaching Piers employees. So you admit it. Admit what? You admit you stole my husband. That's not important. I do wonder why all these people are fleeing from Roger's company. Maybe they don't trust someone who cheated on his wife and married his mistress? What does that mean? Well, I'm just saying. Maybe if he has a history of deception and lying, he might not be the most trustworthy guy. And well word travels fast. I'm sure his reputation precedes him. Though it might just be that he's sort of miserable to work for. I've heard he loves firing people at the drop of a hat. He does not. He treats all his employees with respect. That's not what I've been told. I know quite a few people who worked for him. And as far as I can tell, none of them were poached. They were fired and then went to work for Olwyn after the fact. And she was glad to scoop them up before Roger could come crawling back. They're lying. There's no way you do that to his employees. Well, either way, it doesn't seem like his business would be doing all that well as it is. I've heard from some of his clients that things aren't going so well. I just talked to one of his potential clients the other day and he said he had a rather strange dinner at his house. 
one that you were surely responsible for? He said it was a pretty terrible dinner and awkward to boot. Sounds like someone slacking off. I'm not slacking. I'm just pregnant. Having a baby takes a lot out of you. I don't doubt that, but if you're gonna be the wife of a CEO, you're gonna have to learn to do it all and in 10-inch heels. I know. I have. I've been doing everything I can. But I'm just so tired. And Roger doesn't even appreciate everything I do. This was all supposed to be different. I was supposed to be so happy. Nothing's going right. And once I finally have this kid it's gonna get even worse. I can't stand it anymore. I want out. I can't do it. I think you're committed at this point, Myrna. I mean, you could divorce him, but you're probably just better off dealing with it. No, maybe I should. I should divorce him and live off child support. It would be way easier being a single mother than dealing with all his demands. Do you know how hard it is to throw a party? I mean, I was married to him, too. I've thrown my fair share of dinner parties for powerful executives. And I was working full-time, too. I just want out. I should call my lawyer. You might want to figure out how you're going to survive before you start thinking about divorce. Child support might be enough for your child, but you can't both live off it. And I'm not even sure Roger can afford it at this rate. You might just be better at sticking it out and hoping Roger can pull the company out of the hole before it collapses. There's got to be another way. Afraid not. Good luck, girl. In summary, Roger's company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, leading to his eventual unemployment despite initially avoiding layoffs. Financially strained by their extravagant wedding and compounded by medical bills from Myrna giving birth, Roger and Myrna were forced to sell their house and seek help from Roger's parents, who offered assistance with the condition that Roger work his way up in their company. In contrast, the narrator's life flourished with a successful position at Olwyn's company, which capitalized on the downfall of Roger's former employer. They expanded their business, hired more staff, and saw continuous growth. Despite occasional awkward encounters with Roger at the office, the narrator managed to maintain harmonious relations, including sharing dinners with Myrna and their child at Olwyn's home. Olwyn, a strategic thinker, introduced the narrator to one of her nephews, aiming to strengthen their family connection, a plan that has succeeded as the narrator and their new fiancé plan to wed in the upcoming spring.